Right, today's mission is to change the PCV valve on a Toyota Sequoia iForce 5.7 V8. This is a 2012, still in great shape, some body damage, not much. But uh, here's the aftermarket part, 0450040, got it off Amazon. You can also get the original Toyota OEM part I listed in the beginning of the video. So the first thing, guys, we're going to do... I uh, just want to make a note, this is a 22 millimeter socket required. This is plastic. You want to be careful taking the old one off and putting the new one on finger tight and just a little, little bit of, not, not torque it, man. Don't over torque this or don't even uh, break it. You know what I mean? Then you'll have a whole another project. All right, you want to remove this cover first is it just pops up out of the little holders. Right there, those pins hold it in place. See those two metal pins? And you can see the holes up there where it matches. And then just pull forward and set this aside. Look at that. This is, again is a 2012 Toyota Sequoia 5.7 V8 iForce. And what I have is my 22 millimeter socket right here. And I got the extension as well right there. And where this puppy is is it goes into here but it's at the other end of this hose and you got this insulation and you got this hose in the way so what i'm going to do after removing the cover which i just did is i'm going to pop this hose off just to have uh, room to get my hands in there and then i'm just going to pull this off right here so this is the location for reference front of the vehicle you got your coolant hose right behind the coolant hose you got insulation and that's still in decent shape for being a 2012 it'll probably crumble when I move it a little bit there's your hose hose is still a little spongy which is good and it's got a little clamp on it there's your reference right, first thing I want to just get this this out of the way squeeze that and gently pull that off and don't drop your clip Put that aside, right? Make sure nothing comes off. Don't lose that clip. Now we can get to this a lot easier and just slide that down. I'm gonna slide that down and pull this hose off. All right, it's easier with two hands. Stand All right, I just used my pliers and my two hands and I got this to slide over the nub here. The nub's under here. And now I'll be able to pull that piece off, hopefully with one hand. As you can see, just gently, it's plastic, so pull straight out. Don't put any lateral. And you can see right away there's a lot of crud in there. So I'm going to wipe out that end as well, but I'll remove this hose to get to the actual PCV valve. All right, there's this by. insulation right here. And you want to gently wiggle it out. It may tear because it goes under this intake as well. So you may rip a little piece out, but try to preserve as much as you can. See that? If you just gently, you start getting most of it out, just take your time, there's no hurry, and then you get this out of the way, and then you'll be able to get down there. You can see at the P, the valve is right where my finger is pointing. That's the other end, I'm just gonna pull that hose off to get to the actual valve and remove that with the 22 millimeter. Just peeled back the insulation here just to get it out of the way, just so I didn't completely tear it off the rest of it. And then I'm going to go get a vacuum and just get all that dirt out of it before I remove the valve. All right, now with that all cleaned out so dirt won't fall in, once I remove the PCV, I just wiggle this hose off. There, blammo. You can check it. Still spongy, so it doesn't need replaced. Just remember how it went. Curve part goes up, and uh, best advice is always take a picture before you start ripping stuff apart. So right down there, you see the green? That's the valve, and I'm going to gently remove that, keeping everything straight on, no lateral movement. I do not want to break that and just get that puppy up. You can see all the gunk. This thing has 130,000 miles on it. I don't think it's ever been changed based on the condition of, 
of the insulation. So there you go. I'm going to clean that out. Look how dirty that is in there. And I'll get that puppy out of there. All right, 22 millimeter. Right, I got time. the 22 millimeter with the extension on there, and you just want to go very gently loosen that, and uh, do not break it. Everything's plastic, so just take your time. All right, I'm going to do it with two hands so I don't break right, it. Good news for me, it was not on there really tight at all. Came uh, loose pretty easy, and I'm just going to use my hand and uh, gently remove it the rest of the way. Plus it's hard to get your hand down in there, so just use the extension. All right, there I go. I'm gonna pull that out, holy. Let's see if I can do this without dropping. It's gonna drop, so I'm gonna use two hands. So I'll be right back. All right, make sure there's no particles hanging down there that may fall in, eyeball it. And that's why I vacuumed earlier in case some of that foam would fall down in there. Here's the uh, original. You can see that pretty gunked up. I guess these things do need replacing more than I did. This is, a, like I said, 130,000 on this truck. Uh, I don't think it's ever been replaced. It's, yeah, something you just don't remember, you don't think of doing. And I think the dealerships will want to charge um, at least a few hundred bucks just to replace this thing. I mean, you're paying for their time alone, plus the part they mark up. And uh, yeah, look at that. It is in need of replacing. Let's, uh, let's do this. It still's got a little, uh, little rattle to it. It's, oh my God, look at that, just dripping. Dripping ooze. And let's see what part is on here for reference. One, two, two, oh, four. 38030 and it's uh, I can't even read that name a uh, I can't read the it's just a bunch of waves 2fe plastic all right let's put the new one comparison there's the new one always eyeball make sure it's the same size you never know parts may get messed up uh, or you may have like me two Toyotas I have a truck and I have the Sequoia I want to make sure I have the right part because they are different you can see how dirty that puppy is based on the new one. Make sure it has all the washers and O-rings on it. All right, let's do it. Always start this hand fed onto the threads. There's not much room in here, so do your best just to get it started. And then gently add the socket with the extension and just make sure you're not, uh, it's seated well. You can tell, just nice and gently. So always start with your hand and then add the socket and again careful you do not need to tighten this thing over tighten you will break it all right put the wrench back on the socket i'm just going to do very little there we go not even not even a quarter turn and that should be good because it was not even on there tight and it lasts under 20,000 miles it's not going to fall off it's not under pressure uh like i said nice and easy so what i'm gonna do i'm done with that i'm gonna put the hoses back on just gonna slide that over the new valve and put that right on there and, re and restore this top clip i put a little lube on the hose just to make sliding it over a little bit easier but uh just a little bit all right remember how it went Hey, voila, that was easier than taking it off. And now I'm just going to be careful putting this insulation back, trying to preserve as much of it as I can. And it's not crumbling, which is pretty impressive for a 12-year-old SUV. Look at that. And I saved it. I did. I have seen some guys, not the bus on them, but they just ripped it right out. And uh, I'd just rather have it attached a little bit. It's not going to go anywhere. It just keeps the heat off this little plastic piece. And that is it. The only thing, guess what? You always double check, eyeball, boom, tool, tool, spray. And what did I forget? The hose I moved just to get access to, here's what I do, man. This is my stupid little secret. Just a little bit of you know, Yama Shield, and then these puppies will slide right on. Everything's plastic, take your time. You don't need to be breaking plastic stuff. And I try to find the same imprint on the bracket right there all right double check boom 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 that's on that's clamped right, eyeball no tools left behind before i button this back up with the cover 
always go through just wipe things down where you were working you may have sweat and drips you know your sweat everywhere will just start corroding things and just get the grime off make it look good take pride in what you own and it'll last a long time uh, so here we have it back on and we are good to go yeah i was going to say my biggest concern with doing this is uh just people say they've broken off the pcd valve when either removing it it was over torqued when it was last installed or when they tightened it down the new one they over torqued it or they just yeah broke it off at the threads because it is plastic and then they spend the rest of the day trying to get the threads out of the housing so no problem not an issue at all and uh, all good to go so we're going to put this cover back on again eyeball around make sure you don't have any tools you have any tools laying around Nothing, nothing loose. I got my cable back on. I removed, got my sweat wiped off the car. And with this cover, see the rod in the back there? There's that horizontal rod. You got these little clamps right there. There's one, there's two. And just put them right over those uh, plastic grommets, those uh, bushings right there. Put it right over those, like that, like that. And now, these holes right there see those little holes they'll line up with these pins and i got one two there's only two pins on this one and just goes right down and i just kind of eyeball it to make sure it's lined up and then once it's over you can just wiggle it and push and a little baby snap and that's it so there you go guys uh my first time doing the PCV valve. Obviously, you can see how bad that one was, and I'm embarrassed. But this is how you learn, right? I should have changed this probably every what 40,000 miles. Or they're so cheap, you can do them every oil change if you want. If they're really gunking up. But we're gonna go out and see how this performs now. If it does anything uh, better or worse, I don't know. Uh, the truck's been running fine for a 12-year-old truck. But uh, there you go. This is a again a 2012 Toyota Sequoia iForce 5.7 liter V8. And they made it easy. I have a Tacoma and it is back. The PCV valve is back located behind the engine. You got to remove stuff. It's a pain in the butt, but uh, it's doable. Uh, I will do that one next. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, this was fun. I enjoyed making these videos just for my documentation because God knows I will forget how I did this. And uh, I will just refer to this video and continue on. All right, guys. See you in the next one.